We got a sneak peek at NVIDIA's next gen. No, hey, Intel, bad, put that down. <laughs> oh, but pick up AMD, cause they, we, we can see their next gen too. There's a lot of next gen happening today. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your bright host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Tuesday, November 14th, 2023. I went like that cause you said pick up and I was thinking basketball. Thank you. That was great. Well, we picked up a lot of details yesterday at the Supercomputing 2023 conference. Not only did we find out in information from NVIDIA on their supercomputing side, the stuff that I didn't include from AMD was like, hey, we're still releasing that MI300 chip that we said we were going to release a while ago and then haven't really talked about. Yeah, that's still coming. Please just wait for us. Anyways, NVIDIA talking a little bit more about their Blackwell architecture, which is supposed to be the next generation that we're expected to see on the both AI side, but also gaming side. We're supposed to get that at some point. And it oh. looks like it might be rolling out a little sooner than we thought. This sounds like the nerdiest place on the planet. Supercomputing 2023? This is like what they thought the World's Fair was gonna be like. Everybody just discussing sand thinking once you shoot it with electricity and lightning. How fast can sand think? Well, pretty dang fast. If you look at the B100 GPU that NVIDIA is allegedly going to be launching next year. Does the B stand for billion dollars? It stands for Blackwell, but close. <laughs> <laughs> you, were, you were almost on the right track. Also, here's this amazing graph, which shows you that the <laughs> H100 is 11 times faster than the A100 in this GPT-3 inference performance. H200 is 18 times, and the B100 is vaguely it, large. It's so big. <laughs> Look at how fast that graphics card is. Wow. It's more than a little bit, but you would... You, I would think that the shaded in color means that it's like actually really good. And so the fact that it like gradients out to black tells yeah. me that it gets worse the more it has to perform. I don't know. NVIDIA, maybe work on your marketing a smidge, but you are also marketing to nerds, as you said. Yeah. So this looks like a bar graph that a child made. <laughs> the amount of technological engineering that has gone into this. <laughs> All right, I'm keeping you for hot news. That was amazing. <laughs> Well, it's supposed to get a whole bunch of good new technologies like HBM3E for allowing up to 4.8 terabytes per second of memory bandwidth. That's a lot. That's a lot of mems. Thank you. So one of the things that the Blackwell GPU is supposed to be capable of is 175 billion parameters on GPT-3, which is a big deal. Because your RTX 4090 can do only roughly between 20 and 40 billion parameters. So being able to do 175 puts it significantly faster. And hopefully this trickles on down to the gaming side. Wouldn't you like a card that's faster in AI? Not in gaming. Like the economics? DLSS 4 is what you get. Oh, what are you saying? You said trickle down. <laughs> Uh, there's only one thing trickling down from the rich and it's definitely not their money. Blackwell 2024 to 2025. Look at that coming. I'm excited for that. And I'm also excited about today's video sponsor Jawa because they're the marketplace for gamers by gamers. But because it's November and the holiday season's coming up, they have some big time sales that are going to be going on for the holiday season for Black Friday and every day around it. <laughs> so you can check out Jawa for whether you want to upgrade your GPU, sell your old graphics card directly to them, maybe even order a full system. You can check out Jawa for that. And if you use code UFD10, you can save $10 off your first purchase with them. But in case you're looking for some inspiration for yourself or for a loved one, they have the ultimate tech tuber gift guide where you can see the thoughts from Scattervolt, Zach's Tech Turf, Oztox Hardware, Toasty Bros, and Nerd on a Budget on their ideas of what you could do with a decent budget, or what's the best pre-built around a specific amount of money, mm -hmm. giving you some ideas for you or your loved one this holiday season. Additionally, if you don't want to spend any money, Jawa has a gaming PC giveaway going on right now worth about $1,800 that you can enter at the link in the video description. It's got a 7600X RTX 4070 Ti, pretty beefy specs. Check it out at the link in the video description. Don't forget to use our code UFD10 to save $10 off your first purchase on Jawa, but big thanks to Jawa for sponsoring today's video. Well, also with the holidays, Kyler, you know what goes along with that? That one Green Day song. Wake me up when September ends? Before you go, go. Okay, well, the Game Awards is what I was really referencing. And that we was got my next guess. <laughs> we got the Game of the Year nominations that have come out, including Baldur's Gate 3, Alan Wake 2, Spider-Man 2, Resident Evil 4, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. So those are the top five games of the year, and they had a whole bunch of nominations for many other categories. Nintendo was the biggest publisher with 15 nominations. Sony had 13. Microsoft had 10. Starfield was only nominated.
nominated for one of them, and that was for best RPG, didn't even make it into the game of the year. I'm gonna bet it's Baldur's Gate 3. That's my vote for game of the year. That's my vote for game of the year, yes. Not, it is not that King Kong game. It's not on the list. <laughs> <laughs> no, Baldur's Gate takes the cake. I'm not saying any of these other games are bad, but I really don't see another game having the same amount of cultural significance that Baldur's Gate 3 did when it came out. It's like last year, whenever it was down to Elden Ring versus God of War. Oh, it's Both Elden fantastic Ring. games. God of War Ragnarok is my favorite game. It, it is I love it one of so the most much. beautiful stories I've ever seen executed in a video game, but Elden Ring is Elden Ring. Yeah, it made, it made so much sense. As long as as long as God of War won something, which it did, won a lot mm -hmm. of awards. That's that's all I was, I was looking for. And I'm sure Spider Man and Alan Wake will win stuff, but yeah. Baldur's Gate, game of the year. Well, game of th this is passing UFD deals off to Reese. Here you go, Reese. I'm gonna throw it to you. Can, can you do this, Rickus? Can you make me pick up the entire screen and squish it? And then, yo, welcome back to Yifty Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. And hey, today we're starting with something a little interesting. It's this Asus RS200 ROG Strix riser cable, which at its normal price of $49.99 is a little bit of a joke, but for $10.99, it is honestly one of the best looking riser cables I have seen. But then next up, we have the Solidime P41 Plus, which is a 2230, which is the tiny boy NVMe M.2 SSD. And you can pick up a one terabyte version for only $45.99, making it $18 off. And honestly, this is one of the cheapest prices I've ever seen one of these go for. And then lastly, we have the LG A2 48 inch 4K OLED smart TV. I am on the LG OLED train and I cannot get enough. So I thought I'd recommend this for only $549.99. It is currently $750 off. And with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett and them for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, I've got a terrible deal for you. More expensive than you could possibly imagine. One of the best electric minivans that I've heard get announced, the Volvo EM90. I want this thing so badly. It has a lot of specs. It's designed like a Volvo, whatever. The Volvo EVs are actually not too terrible. It's supposed to be a living room-like environment. You can see it with its captain's chairs. It's got a 15-inch screen that you're supposed to watch. It has sound isolation and road noise cancellation. It's got air suspension. It's got a whole bunch of things, 5G connectivity, so that your kids can stream as much bluey as you want. Sounds expensive. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> can do zero to 16, eight seconds. 8.3, that's not terribly fast. So it's like, it's a minivan. And, and it can go 459 miles. Sounds expensive. It's $114,000. That's not even the worst part. It's China only right now. Uh, I really, oh man, I really want an electric minivan. And the ID Buzz is still not releasing in the US. This is frustrating. Electric minivan, please. If it helps. Yes. I do think it's kind of ugly. I get it. I get it. I, I, I see. I see what you're saying. Form over function, or function over form for me right now. The captain seats in the second row look like first class airplane seats. It's lovely. Yeah. Yeah. It, it does look luxurious. Yeah. Imagine the cannonball in one of that. Oh, that would be that would be ridiculous. It's so good. That would be so comfy. It, it wouldn't even be a challenge anymore. No. <laughs> Oh, well, let's challenge Intel to something. Knock it off. Because MSI is preparing the BIOS updates for the upcoming APO or application optimization that Intel's launched with their 14th gen chips, which is some tinkering courtesy of ThreadDirector advancements to find out how can you optimize specific applications to make things run faster. So we've seen performance improvements to the tune of 10 to 20% just by turning this feature on. Because what it does, according to other videos that I've seen, it can highly boost the clocks on the e-cores a little bit to help supplement in gaming. So this is a very good feature. This is a really cool thing. You click a button, it says, hey, here's the profile for Metro Exodus, and then you get 16% faster FPS. Is there any downside? So not to turning it off, right? Like maybe a little bit more power consumption, but everything's being optimized. The downside comes with the shenanigans that Intel either has justification for and is not telling us, or is just doing it to upsell you on specific things. So the problem here is, and I kind of gave a little bit of wiggle room when this first got announced, but it seems as things are moving forward and Intel is giving answers on this, that it's, it's shady. It's purely a marketing thing. This can only be enabled on 14th gen chips, mm. to which you might respond, but don't 12th and 13th gen chips share the same architecture? To, to which I would say, yes, they do. There's no valid real reason that Intel's come out with why they can't enable it on 12th and 13th gen. Oh no, it's the BMW heated seats all over again. It's not a paid for feature, <laughs> but it gets even worse than that. So if you buy the latest 14th gen, you can't enable it 
on anything below the i7 14700K. So if you bought the 14600K, this gaming feature doesn't count because it's not like part of their gaming performance boost setup. For whatever reason, maybe there is an engineering reason for it that they are not specifying, but it is not okay for you to withhold this feature set that increases performance from people who paid less to you just because you don't wanna. APO stands for A, wanna pay house? <laughs> I don't, I don't, I think, I think that this is unokay. That would be APU, oh, but that one's already taken, but that would stand for, ah, this is unokay. Thank you, Kyler, for that. Um, let me know what you think of this Intel APO thing. I would like to hear Intel's reasoning on this. As long as there's a modicum of sensibility, I can get over it. But the response that I've seen given is that they have no intention to enable it on previous generations, which is like, it's a non-answer. Just no, we're not gonna. Feels like every time uh, we sort of give Intel a little bit of slack. Like we, we learned something new about what they're doing with the new generation. The original argument was 14th gen is the same thing as 13th gen. Then we learned, oh, okay, it's not, that's okay. Then we learned this new thing that we're all gonna be upset about. And I feel like in a couple of weeks, we're gonna learn like, oh, it's not really that bad. But then there's gonna be another thing that's irritating. We'll see, we'll see. <laughs> I tend to not jump on the hate bandwagon very quickly. I like to get mad. <laughs> I like to reserve my hostility for reasons that I think are deserving. And I thought the APO thing wasn't. And now I'm starting to see Intel make a few missteps that I would like corrected, but I'm not correcting AMD on nothing right now mm. because we have our look at Prometheus. Look at that guy, he's so muscly. <laughs> so I think video cards <laughs> made this. It's actually kind of hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so Prometheus, well, you, you get the reference, right? You understand Prometheus. Like the- The, the origin movie the, for aliens. Right, right. yes. <laughs> so Prometheus is supposed to be the architecture that is gonna be Zen 5C cores. So we're just starting now to get Zen 4C cores rolling out, which is taking everything that you love and know about the Ryzen 7000 and squishing it real tight and, and delivering- Throwing it in the ocean. That's why they call them C cores. And delivering it in a tighter package that makes it a little slower, but mostly still all the same. It doesn't require anything messy going on in Windows to make this all work. Now we have some details on what's going on with Prometheus, which is supposed to be the C core to Nirvana, which is the Zen 5 core that AMD is making that's supposed to come out sometime, hopefully late next year. Maybe we will get a CES announcement of Zen 5 and Ryzen 8000, I'm not entirely sure on that just yet, but it turns out that they're naming all of these things after Greek gods. So Zen 4 was Persephone, Zen 4C was Dionysus, Zen 5's Nirvana, Prometheus, and we got Morpheus coming up for Zen 6. They're just, they're going ham with this naming scheme. But also in this leak, which actually happened to be an AMD engineer posting on their LinkedIn, uh -oh. not only did we get the code name for Prometheus, but we do know that they are looking at switching over to Samsung for making their four nanometer nodes, which is a pretty big deal because you can see that they've been with TSMC since seven nanometers. Now they are with five nanometers. They're gonna switch over to Samsung, just like Nvidia did for the RTX 30 series, and then promptly switch back to TSMC, which it looks like that's gonna happen when they go over to three nanometers. So one person's LinkedIn post gave away a lot of AMD secrets. We now know it's Prometheus for Zen 5C. We now know that they are looking at going on Samsung for the four nanometer node, and we could probably hope to expect to see more of this later next year. Hmm. You wanna see more of the comment response? Oh, I do, I do, I do. You were a part of Hot News yesterday, and I doubt you even watched it. When am I supposed to watch it? For fun, at home. At home, I got here the, the moment it went out. <laughs> <laughs> Jello says, lots of interesting news, but learning that there was a satellite option for texting that Android manufacturers just refused is actually incredibly frustrating. Sorry to hear that. I don't know about this. Cole Sand saying, kind of my biggest problem with Asus over the years is the growing amount of small oversights that show a lack of care and attention to detail. I I hate how expensive their graphics cards can be. <laughs> Cole also said, I had literally zero ideas hype chat was a thing. We've got a few in our day. We've gotten a few hype chats. DJ. DJ Glicker. Good luck, Reese. Good luck, Reese. DJ, good luck, Reese, says, coming in. <laughs> <laughs> says, Asus could do one of three things. Release a new revision with the correct text, offer RMAs to existing owners. Release a new revision with the correct text, no RMA to existing owners, and do nothing. I actually think that there's a fourth option here. They could just release a new IO shroud, which like, the user could replace themselves. I don't think that would be terribly difficult. There's like some thermal pads that you would also have to offer. But I think that there, there's a fourth thing that they could do here. And, 
It's probably simpler than some of the other things that you suggested. They could kill you. Ron the Tape said, I watched all teardowns for the new Steam Deck OLED exactly for this purpose, to see what kind of connector it uses and if there's a slight chance that we can see something like a bridge PCB or adapter to be able to connect it to the OG Steam Deck. I agree. There were multiple people in the comments that said, well, just go watch Gamers Nexus teardown. I did. And did you know what Steve said? He's not tearing apart the screen, which <laughs> made me go, ah, well, that doesn't tell me anything. He said that we need it for few, and I was like, ah, okay, fine. I don't get to see the connector. I wa I specifically watched Gamers Nexus teardown because I was like, oh, but they're going to have it. And they did it, which is why I brought it up. They're supposed to be the people that get too far into it. <laughs> <laughs> Nibble yeah. says, I did the entire EVA 02 build with all the peripherals. That's a spicy meatball right there. Mm. Saying at this point, I'm far too lazy to care about a typo. The product is beautiful, albeit unusable due to the 14900K having so many RAM stability issues. The first I've heard of that, but... Unusable, you say? <laughs> oh, goodness. that That's frustrating. I'm sorry to hear that. But also, I hope it's a beautiful system for you. Vash said, life has taught me that typos usually lead to highly desired collectibles, especially if the error gets mm. fixed, making the mistakes worth more. Don't know if that would translate to a motherboard that's already in a niche market, but the world is wide and full of wonder. That's a good outlook. I like that take. I'm going to think about that if that ever happens to me. Mm -hmm. Lexicon saying the typo on the super expensive collector's item motherboard definitely bothers me about as much as you switching the G with a J does, which is a lot more than it should. I did call it Evangelion. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. What's wrong with that? G's gets pronounced That's what it's called. all the time. Ginger? Giraffe? Shingy. Yeah, you know Shingy from Evangelion? <laughs> He's supposed to get in the robot. <laughs> in the robot. In the robot. <laughs> Fitrovsky says, thank you for spending some time with us, even though you're not feeling your best. Fitrovsky, I got, I got. Some. He has the stats to back it up. <laughs> I'm not going through that on hot news, but I will say you're welcome. This is a job for me though, right? If I don't do hot news, we lose revenue, which means that I have less ability to pay my employees, of which there are a growing amounts. This company depends on me working and other people working and so I work even when I don't feel the greatest. What about Rev and Old? I only like the new stuff. Mm, me too. You don't want the aged cheddar? I like Gouda. I'm a Gouda guy. <laughs> I've seen some shady stuff that you've done. Oh, well. Fragalot says AI pin might be useful if it didn't cost the same as a new phone. If it was $50 and it was tethered to your phone wirelessly, then it could be useful. Yes, maybe, except for Palm tried that with the Palm Palm and nobody really cared about it. Did it go on your palm? It was very small. <laughs> 43 New Jersey Devil says, oh no, now Brett is sick. The GPU lick virus is spreading through U of D Tech's office. Take a bite. No, I'm good, thank you. I've already had my oh. fill. Multiple people commenting on my John Cena joke yesterday, saying that John Cena joke never gets old. The delivery of that John Cena joke was perfection, but they dropped the lawsuit case because they couldn't see him. I love this channel. Thank you. That's the validation I needed on a, on my sick day. Then we got- I was John Cena yesterday. Because you weren't here? Yeah. Nobody could see you? Well, I was here. Great. Headshot saying, I just finished Miles Morales on Saturday. Me too. I platinumed it on Sunday. That required me playing the game again. You have to beat it on New you Game Plus. Beat it twice. So, and unfortunately, not all of the cinematics or the cutscenes are skippable. Only select one. So, like the intro one, which is stupid long, you have to watch that again. Very frustrating. But I did. I platinumed it because I was sick and I haven't played video games in a long, long time. Brian Z. Jones saying, "Oh, Brett, what happened to being anti-anti?" You're right. That's a good, that's a good call out. Why I, don't you want ants to have eyes? Not what we're talking about. You're, you're absolutely right. I kind of want to give myself permission for humane because it is so ridiculous. I tried to balance it by saying I respect the engineering side of it because I do like it's, I don't want to detract from the fact that it took a lot of people, a lot of effort to make this thing. It absolutely did. But I also recognize that just because a product can be made, it does not mean it can be commercialized. And I think either the company is super into it and thinks it's gonna do what they say it's gonna do, which means they're delusional. Or they want to believe that this is the pathway to a greater future, which I, I guess I could get behind. I don't think this is it. Or they're using this as a runway to actually get bought out by a bigger company and make a lot of money off of this, in which case, boo on them. Or some fourth option that I'm not thinking of right now because I'm a little exhausted. Just be like a billionaire's passion project. It's unfortunately not. Oh. Yeah, no, it's two ex-Apple employees who made it. And I went through a whole and race. they saved a lot of money and uh, they're doing it with their, their vast wealth. I don't think they have that much money. <laughs> no, they probably got venture capital backing and a whole bunch of other stuff. Yeah, I hear you on the being the anti-anti. Sometimes you guys are right. Whoa! See you tomorrow. Better do. That's the sound the camera makes.